Hello everybody and welcome back to Medieval Total War and our Holy Roman Empire Glorious Achievements campaign. We recently just got some new Glorious Achievements, a uh, new goal for us, the Holy Roman Empire. And so this is something I'm going to be working towards. We're currently ahead in the points game and uh, I'd just like to solidify that a little bit. We've got all of our homelands, so nothing more can be done there. Uh, we've got a crusade to Antioch, that's giving us an extra three points. And the Holy Roman Empire would be a nice one, not only because of the points, but also because it's going to secure us some very nice territory. We're not necessarily going to go for all of these, uh, but I am going to make that my goal. Now, complicating that is the war that we started with the Spanish a bit hastily uh, in the last episode. They've got a couple of fairly formidable stacks here led by a three-star general and we have a lot of stuff that's not too fantastic. We've got a lot of mercenaries. They did not serve us all that well in the last battle but we do have the option to recruit you know a few more occasionally depending on what shows up here. Uh, in terms of our income we're looking at almost 800 a turn. Pretty decent. We've got 3,000 florins in the bank. We are making some investments around our realm, particularly in our new uh, Holy Land holding of Antioch. Uh, so I think I want to keep that up here. Let's just go ahead and keep training more archers. I think those are going to be rather important. Uh, yeah, let's keep going with that in Provence as well. And everywhere else, yeah, let's just keep uh, pumping out the archers. In Swabia though, what I want to do here is another crusade. There's a chance that this may take us down into Venice maybe even down into Milan, we'll have to see. Uh, but if we can start the crusade through Italian territory, uh, even if its ultimate goal is somewhere in the Holy Land, then that may weaken our Italian uh, soon-to-be foes. Now, in terms of what they have, uh, their strength is really gathered around Milan. I don't know what they have in Tuscany, though. So that is going to be uh, something we'll want to send an agent to. Let's, in fact, send our princess up there. Um, we've got her down in Naples currently, just verifying that the Byzantines are in possession of this territory. That's something that we may be able to get to. Uh, we've got 20 turns before the first of those points is counted. So 1150, then 1204, and then 1250. So we've got a lot of time in here uh, for this one. We don't need to rush it. Um, honestly, the Crusades are coming to an end a lot sooner. These end uh, at 1204. So if we don't get all of these points, or even any of these points, by 1150, that's not necessarily the end of the world, but the Crusades are something we should keep working on. However, because we're ahead in points, what I'm going to use the Crusade for ultimately, uh, in addition to potentially weakening the Italians, uh, is to basically secure my position in the Holy Land. We've got, you know, the start of something in Antioch here. We've got a, a pretty decent force, but if the Turks decide to throw their weight at me, and the Italians do as well, and let's see, they are, they are in fact allied, so if they were to both attack simultaneously, uh, that would be really overwhelming. And uh, we've only got a fort here next turn, so we need to get some more territory. Uh, because of that, my goal is going to be not to acquire points here, but to acquire reasonable territory. I think the one that makes the most sense is Tripoli, even though that is worth, um, okay, that's worth a couple. Edessa is the one that's only worth a single point. I'm not particularly interested in that one. Uh, but we'll take Tripoli, and then we'll go for Palestine, and I think we have time to accomplish all of those things. Uh, we do need to make sure that we keep training stuff and we keep having uh, men that we can throw at this situation here. So let's get some spearmen up here. And yeah, let's go ahead and get some urbans. And we're, we're kind of going overboard here. Let's see, let's see how that looks. Okay, I don't like how the Spanish are gathering. Oh, but I like that the Almohads are moving up. Okay, Gertrude is a spincer. Alright, we've got an, uh, an event here. Uh, all the Turkish governors get plus one acumen, but Turkish zeal is decreased. Honestly, I'm not sure what Muslim zeal does in this game. Um, in the Catholic uh, sense, it affects 
inquisitors or inquisitors affect the zeal and that can also play a role with crusades probably it's the same uh, with Islam just for their jihads okay odd number of toes yeah that's not good um, we should check the heirs here we still have plenty so I'm not too concerned there um, our king though our kings are just old what I'm looking forward to is is having someone's son actually take over instead of another uh, you know younger brother but we're looking good in terms of influence here so um, so that's pretty decent but yeah we've got the Spanish king moving up he's a great warrior uh, which is giving him a lot of health uh, he's chivalrous uh, he's fervent uh, chivalrous is you know plus two morale for all his men so that would be a big problem he's got five stars as well hopefully he's not gonna bother to attack hopefully he'll just you know die of old age um, I don't see much of a point of recruiting that trebuchet because this is a pretty mobile army so they could just get in under under my protection or uh, under my attack this doge though I mean he's so weak he's in he's a very new um, faction leader uh, his father or older brother just died in the last season here and these forces are looking so ripe I shouldn't have bothered attacking the Spanish let's see is there any emissary I have lying around to give another shot to peace let's see because they are uh, at war with the Almohads um, and there was an attack towards Cordoba I don't know how that went but hopefully it went poorly for them and if so, we may be able to uh, get them off our case a little bit. All right. We are really dangerously low in terms of funds, and we do have more troops coming in. So I think we just need to sit tight here. Although the fort, this is going to be a priority. So now that the fort is built, we can recruit uh, some very interesting units. We've got mounted crossbowmen already. Kind of shocking that we can get them so early. We, we cannot recruit infantry crossbowmen at this point in the game. But mounted crossbowmen uh, for some factions are available just at the horse breeder, which is, I think, just the second tier of stables. This was already built here for me. Uh, but the one I'm, I'm slightly more interested in is the turco poles, just because they seem like a more cool unit. Uh, they're just more uh, in line with the, uh, with the region. And in fact, yes, these guys are going to get a valor bonus here. This region is famous for its turco poles. So um, they're 40 support cost. I'm wondering if it's if it's something I need to train honestly at this point let's hold off let's let's because I think we've got a pretty strong army here given what we're uh, what we're up against it's a lot of those peasants right uh, and more cav is not going to be the answer to dealing with uh, with those um, uh, all those camels so probably the next most important build is going to be an inn just for cases of extreme emergency uh, if we need a lot of troops all of a sudden and what we're doing here is just throwing in uh, units to try to deter the Spanish um, and if that ceasefire doesn't work we're gonna have to think about throwing them in again just to get them off our backs Looks like that Almohad attack failed because the Spanish were not invading Cordoba. Okay, yeah, Spanish are not interested in a ceasefire, unfortunately. Oh, fantastic, Prince Herman has the approachable manor. And Tuscany, yeah, that looks like it's got, you know, a, a half stack there. Uh, they've got some Genoese sailors in addition to the regular archers that they can train. So the dif difference between these two, I I'm not super familiar with this unit. Uh, they are fast, they're vulnerable to missiles, so maybe they're faster than, um, than regular archers. They cost a little bit less, and uh, they get a valor bonus, I'm guessing, from Genoa. Yeah, so you may as well train them if you're the Italians in preference to archers. Although I don't believe valor bonuses affect the actual missile attack. I could be wrong there. All right, so here is the king. He's moving out, which is kind of nice, but they've got three full stacks here. They're just waiting. So the thing that they may be waiting for is 
to uh, to sense weakness in one or both of these provinces because attacking one is going to leave them potentially exposed to a counterattack from the other. Alternatively, they may just be doing a uh, getting ready for a two pronged attack here. So I don't know. Two more seasons for the uh, crusade. Now the other option here is if it will allow me to go down in this direction because there is a land route all the way over here into Tripoli. That would be ridiculous, um, but it might be something I attempt. Okay, I think we're going to call this good for training. Let's bring all the units I can down. We've got a bunch of urban militia up here. And these guys are not doing us a lot of good up in Friesland. Uh, Flanders, we don't have a lot going on. But we've got a boat here. And, you know, 277. If if we were to get one ship in the North Sea, we would start making some cash. I don't know how much it would be. All right, 281. That's actually quite decent. We're not trading. Oh, actually, we are trading. We're trading with the English. So one cool thing here you can do once you start to have trade routes, it can be a little tricky to know exactly how much you're making and where you're selling it. But if you go to your economy tab and select the, uh, the province you're interested in, it'll tell you, okay, here's the local trade you're making, and then here's the sea trade, right? This is the, the uh, trade routes that are connected by your ports. So here we're trading 73 worth of goods in Wessex, and notice that the wool doesn't show up here because Wessex also produces that. But we're also shipping some stuff over to Normandy, which is owned by the French, and they don't have any of these trade goods, so we're giving them 104 there. So, you know, I think it would be worth it to build another uh, another bark, I guess this is. Support costs here are only 20, and we're going to more than make up for that. If we get it up into this region, we're going to have one port. I think Northumbria also produces wool. Possibly not, but we'd at least be getting, uh, you know, 70 or so out of it. Uh, if we go down here, we've, on the other hand, we've got two regions which do not produce anything that Flanders has. So we would be getting our full, uh, full return out of Brittany and Aquitaine. So that's going to be what we do. One more ship down to the Bay of Biscay where the, where the couple ports are. And unfortunately, since we can't trade with ourselves, the North Sea is only going to give us you know, the single uh, benefit from Northumbria's port, but if Mercia will build one, and possibly Scotland, um, then that would, you know, eventually be worth it. Once the Baltic Sea gets going, this can be very lucrative too, but there's not too much there currently. All right, I think we're just kind of in a holding pattern. Let's see what else we want to move. Archers, I'm going to move everything kind of down to Burgundy. Um, let's see, those guys are probably good where they are. And Spearmen, yep, move them over to Lorraine. Just keep shunting these guys over. Okay. It's all about the Spanish at this point. Okay, here's the big attack from the Turks. Spanish seem to be just holding put. All right, 1258 to 1077. So this could be a, a very nice moment. This is their sultan. Uh, they've got an interesting mixed force, a lot of horse archers. And, you know, archers in general, but, you know, some, some infantry, only these two units, uh, and some camels as well as a couple of full-strength Ghulam bodyguards. So this is not necessarily going to be as much of a pushover as the Egyptian fight was. If nothing else, this is going to be a little more trying on my patience because they've got so many missile units. They're just going to, you know, try to wear us down. And we don't have a lot of heavily armored troops, actually. Uh, but let's just shuffle these and get the useless guys kind of towards the end. We don't really need uh, these low number units. Uh, but I'm hoping that with the archers that we have, we've got basically four full units there, uh, that that'll be enough to keep them you know, I guess off our back if we target the horse archers. Uh, and maybe if they get a little impatient and charge our lines, we can do a lot of damage. Uh, this is this is looking pretty good as a starting point. I think I want to bring up some horses a little bit sooner into the mix. 
Yeah, something like that. Yeah, pretty flat. Rainy, though. So that's nice. And we don't have any particular advantage in terms of uh, in terms of hills. We've got we've got one. But let's get all of our archers right about here. And Prince Herman, as well as the uh, Teutonic sergeants, and the Sekali will have them on the flank. Although I kind of want to keep them back from the horse archers. Let's see our front line. You know, of our uh, of our armored troops, this is looking actually pretty decent. Behind them, we've got more uh, kind of random stuff. Yeah, Slav warriors. Let's have them on the flank to just to kind of go wherever they're needed. And the ballistic crew, you know, I guess somewhere like here. They're not going to accomplish too much. There they are. Let's just speed up the advance. Honestly, if we get rid of this ballista, that's that's kind of fine. All right, let's withdraw them. Actually, they're not doing anything. All right, they may try and attack. Looks like the gulams are massing on my left or the center, where I've got my swords. So. That may be a problem. We've got urban militia right behind to rush in. Start cutting them down with our anti-armor bonus. Alright, here come the Bedouins. Great, let's rush our other cav forward. The ones are standing at the moment. Send the fanatics in against the Bedouins there. I'm just going to hold with the foot soldiers. And yep, urban militia, let's go right after the Sultan. Spearman will charge against the Bedouins too. Alright, great, there's the Sultan right there. We've got militia sergeants ready to go. Oh, this is the Sekali. Let's turn them over that direction. They can melee with horse archers. Teutonic sergeants can as well, although they're not going to be as good at catching those calves. Alright, I think I want to send my uh, my prince in. If we can draw this to a quick conclusion by killing the Sultan, that'll be a big blow. Alright, we need to focus on those horse archers though. They're going to be the most annoying unit. We are seeing some routing, but taking a lot of losses. And here comes the infantry. All right, this is now the time for our swords, but they're kind of out of the the way. Let's send the sergeants in after this one unit of Gulam bodyguard. Finally getting our swords in against those spears. go after the desert archers. The Sultan is really holding on. Yeah, these Gulan bodyguards are quite solid when they have some good traits, but fortunately their infantry is basically going. The danger, of course, is that they regroup. There he goes. Great. The danger is, of course, these are horse archers, and their their tactic is to do exactly this, to sort of fall back and shoot, fall back and shoot until your lines are all strung out. So, in this type of situation, you want to just chase them down, just to stop them. Alright, what is this? <laughs> Did I just uh, accidentally click? My guys, okay, well... Those guys are retreating, which is fine. They haven't uh, quite gotten to the point where we can call on reinforcements yet, but that may not be an issue. I think we just keep up the pursuit and wait at the reinforcement line for uh, the other groups to appear. we got to keep our general along with them so these guys don't, uh, 
don't our men don't get too scared if the enemy should turn around and you know start start attacking them again but we've got a lot of these infantry who are accompanying us to the uh, reinforcement point where the enemy is likely to come on I guess we should bring down the rest of the archers too we still have a lot of ammo left they did not wait around uh, the Turks Which was, I think, good for us. They could have done a lot more damage if they'd just been patient with their horse archers and uh, whittled us down a lot further. Uh, and then charged, because it would have been rather dicey there. Uh, if we had to pull on a reinforcements, because we didn't have that much great stuff waiting. But let's see here. We've got our Sekali. I mean, this is a very small unit. If they catch these horse archers, they're going to do damage, but they may not win, necessarily. I'm just hoping that these guys are withdrawing completely. There we go. We got our nice enemy, our fleeing the field message, and that'll be the end of it. Alright, so we're going to just hold on to those captured soldiers. I'm not going to execute them. And we're going to play up the chivalry of our Prince Herman here. Ooh, ransom refused. The King of Hungary is dead. Alright, there's the new king there. And we've got a succession. Alright, Prince Rudolph is friendly, that's great, but we have uh, successfully defended Antioch yet again. And we've got an inn down here now, which means we can start to recruit some more stuff. Uh, mercenaries are usually good, but as you've seen, they don't always perform in a predictable way. Their morale seems to be lower than comparable units. I'm not sure, I haven't actually looked at the stats for them, uh, but they seem not to be super effective unless you have them grouped among other regular troops that you've trained yourself. So they're the kind of thing you want to use uh, in numbers, you know, in, in an intelligent way. And they're more expensive, right? Like, so archers have a support cost of, what is it, 30 normally? Uh, or 32, 37, something like that. And so you can see their support costs are basically double what they would be if you trained them yourself. So again, I'm not sure. The only thing that that is really uh, quite a good deal usually is artillery mercenaries. So catapult crew, support cost of 24. Now, I don't know if that's like always the case. Like, like if the support costs for catapults are normally that low and there's like some sort of bug with how they're recorded, uh, coded in the game, or possibly this is an intended feature to represent mercenary... Uh, artillery crews who would wander around and sell their specialized services to various leaders during the period. Uh, but either way, catapults are particularly good, better than ballistas. And this is just looking really bad, so the best I can hope for here is that we're just going to have a cold war, I guess, or that the Almohads are going to suddenly, uh, suddenly do a great job. We've got the king hanging out in Aragon for some reason, possibly because he feels safe here. Okay, we do have an emissary in Aquitaine. Let's send him down to Grenada. And we're bringing down some spears and all these urbans. And we're almost ready for our crusade. So, actually, do we want to send these guys or some of them on that crusade? Let's bring him over to Tyrolia, and yeah, let's leave it as it is for now, because I think this is more important uh, to defend against the Spanish than it is to uh, to uh, to plan for the Crusade. We are so um, so poor at this moment, though, so that we're really going to basically be having to throw in whatever we can uh, with that Crusade. We won't be able to train up a bunch of stuff. Now, Prince of Antioch, did I not have someone? in that role already. I thought it was this guy. Maybe he was killed in battle. Let's uh, let's give it to him again. Maybe I was just waiting to give that to Prince Herman when he aged out of that role. Uh, but let's see, that's going to give us a little more cash. 593. We'll see if the Egyptians want to take a swipe now. But hopefully we've uh, kept the Turks off of us for a few years. The Byzantines are in rum, so we know the Turks are not doing well. All right, Princess Christina and Prince Herman. Absolutely, I would like him to have uh, start having some kids. 
All right, Hard Canute the Second, the Kingdom of Denmark. Great. We're now allied with the Danes. That's really nice. We're allied with all of our neighbors essentially, uh, except the English, and uh, we're not allied with the Italians. And that is uh, that is good considering what I'm uh, contemplating. You know, again, this army. It's just not looking that strong. They've got some bribed Gulham bodyguards that they brought back, apparently, from Grenada, which actually, I mean, they're, they're pretty tough here. Hmm. So here's an issue. If I go to war with the Italians soon, that may have the effect of strengthening the Spanish because this king here is super weak, three influence. And if I attack with overwhelming numbers, that's probably going to uh, induce him to just withdraw from Milan altogether. Uh, he probably won't even fight for it. His units aren't that good, and we could outnumber him. Um, if that happens, he's going to go to somewhere like Genoa or Venice, Tuscany. And if we repeat again and pursue him again, and he withdraws a second time, uh, that could be a civil war trigger. And we've got a big army over here in Grenada. And this guy's quite loyal. Um, but regardless, there are probably some generals who are not. Yeah, like this guy here, he's he's a uh, probably a cousin of the current Doge, and so he's prime to be a uh, a candidate for a civil war. So is this guy. We could just absolutely hose this faction with probably one attack, and uh, I think they've got these islands, and that's about it. Unless they've done a lot of uh, you know other bribing, so. That could be good on the one hand. It's always fun to uh, precipitate a civil war in a neighboring faction. The problem with it is, if this becomes rebel, I'm concerned that the Spanish are just going to pounce on it. The Spanish are currently... Uh, they are not allied with the Italians. They are allied with the Turks. Uh, they're at war with me and the Almohads. They're allied with the Turks. They're allied with the Egyptians. So they could easily... Uh, you know, attack the Italians or attack this army if it turns rebel. So I don't necessarily want to hurt the Italians. I'd like them to hold on to Grenada just to be a thorn in the Spanish. Uh, but let's just move that around and see. We've got our crusade marker now. Um, let's see what valid targets are. Now we may not be able to actually send this crusade. Okay, Cordoba is a valid target, which means that is in the hands of the Almohads. Fantastic. Okay, so let's um, let's do this. Let's go to Tripoli. Let's see what the Pope is going to say. 250 florins. Yep. All right. Let's do it. So the Pope is going to uh, is going to agree to this crusade for 250 florins because he knows how poor we are. This is pretty decent. Five uh, units of fanatics and two of the Order Foot Soldiers, a very loyal two-star commander, Carl von Holland. And where can we go? We can go down to Tyrolia. I don't know. Yeah, let's do it. This is probably going to lead us down into Venice. And uh, let's just hold. Let's not do any more building. I think the Spanish are now in defensive mode. Uh, if the if the, uh, if the Almohads have Cordoba, then this is a really weak showing in Castile. And that's why their king is hanging out in Aragon, because he just doesn't have, uh, doesn't have the strength, I guess. He's, he's very, very concerned about me, obviously, probably because I've got decent-sized forces. All right. I'm going to keep those forces there. I'm not going to send them on Crusade. Because here's the other thing about, about Crusades. Once you get them going... Um, there's a nice momentum that you can build up once you establish a beachhead in the Holy Land. All right, the English are retreating out of Anjou. Whoa, go French! Fantastic. Oh, okay, we got some bandits over in the in Brittany. That's where the French king is. All right, he's got to watch out for that. The Spanish king has died. Good, very good. That was the five-star king. Right, and we've got Prince Friedrich. Okay, secret perversion, but a great warrior. Let's uh, take a closer look at him. Loyalty looks great. Uh, he is he is still not the heir, and so we're still looking at uh, you know another king who's 
going to be in his 50s by the time he takes over. But look at the influence on Ludwig IV. Why do I have such huge influence? Not sure. Okay, we're starting to pick up uh, some other units. Now, th some of these are interesting because they are not from units that I have built. So these Teutonic Sergeants were not in there in the Crusade at first. They just popped into existence as we started moving. And it's not because they got hoovered up from my province of Tyrola, because as you can see, I don't have those units. Um, so some of these just join up. It's great. Okay, unfortunately, we can't go into Italian lands. That would have been nice. Uh, well, let's see. Do we want to throw in anything else? I was kind of thinking about throwing the Slavs in, but now I'm not so sure. We've got a decent showing. With that, plus with what we've got down here, we can just go into Tripoli, I think. We can potentially train. We can potentially recruit some mercenaries just before we're about to go. Uh, and then we go into uh, Tripoli with probably Prince Herman at the helm again. And uh, we augment our king's influence even further. Now, the situation here is changing a bit. So I won't want to uh, take too many of these units down with me into Crusade uh, against Tripoli because we need to keep Antioch. And what's happening is the Byzantines are expanding, so they're continuing to do well. They're possibly going to pass me in terms of uh, goals or in terms of points here, uh, but that's fine. We get plenty of time, but they're taking over territory from the Turks. I'm actually happy to see this, but the potential negative is that the Turks are not going to be interested in taking back Edessa anymore. They may just lash out with all of their strength at me. You know, who knows? Okay. So everything else here, I think, is good. I'm just waiting. God, they got four stacks here. I mean, take back Spain, man. That's like in your name. All right, what's she doing? Just kind of looking around. Curious how Portugal is doing. And I think I want to keep my emissary just down here among the uh, the Almohads, just to see if there's any big counterattack. Yeah, the French are going all out. What a cool little narrative there is in these games, because we had uh, the French attacking me, wiped out very early in the game, re-emerge against the English, and now they're taking back their territory. Okay, we've got an assassin loose, though. All right, uh, so this bishop is no longer with us in Antioch. It's probably from the Turks. I mean, Syria grants bonuses of, uh, I think, plus two to assassins trained there. Okay, so extra zeal, actually extra influence for the English king, but lower zeal in English provinces as a result of Geoffrey of Monmouth. And I don't, I don't think so. I mean, I'm glad the Byzantines are attacking the Turks, but um, I want to hold on to my princess. Right in here, 1240 men. Yep, yeah, that's that's fine. Let's go into Hungary, and uh, I can't. I'm not sure if uh, we're going to have to get permission again, or if the permission they gave us already continues throughout other Crusades. I think we're going to need to to ask them nicely to pass through yet again. All right, let's go down here to Tyrolia with these guys. Um, let's move them. Actually, no, you're going to stay here, but you can go over to Burgundy. We'll just keep matching up the numbers. And uh, pretty decent public order in Portugal. Pretty decent numbers in terms of uh, Spanish military. And here, yeah, they're starting to tech up to some better units. They get feudal sergeants here instead of just spearmen and peasants. And enough genets that I'm a little, you know, a little concerned. We do have a lot of archers, though, so I think if we were to do this intelligently this time, it, it could turn out better. Uh, but I'm going to hold out. I don't think they're going to do anything crazy. Let's see. Prince Friedrich, let's send him over to Burgundy, uh, because having some cab over there could be nice. And let's see what the Hungarians have to say. This is a new king. All right, we are welcome to pass through Hungary. Okay, and from here, 
1544, we picked up about 300 men. And here's where our numbers are going to plummet again. Our only option is Bulgaria, and this is an Orthodox province, of course. The Byzantines are really, really doing well. Uh, that's going to change in about 100 uh, turns. So don't worry about that. Okay, we did get another boat, and I should have paid attention to that. Um, but yes, the the oh no, we lost a port. Uh, I guess Brittany, uh, the port was destroyed as a result of the rebellion, and that means uh, there's no port here, just rebels over there. So let's see, is it worth going into Northumbria instead? I'm kind of curious what's going on in Aquitaine. I like having a boat there just to see. If we see that there is another port uh, built in Mercia, we can just shift our resources over there. We're still going to be making a little extra money thanks to that ship. Um, I'm going to hold off, though, on training another one simply because our, our funds are pretty low. So let's just hold off. Okay, Byzantines. We may want to get working on that alliance. <clears throat> okay. They're happy to have us uh, move through Bulgaria, though. They are the strongest. Okay. So the Italian Doge is now hanging out in Genoa, which would make taking Milan not quite so easy. Um, here we've got an interesting mixed force. They've got some Berber camels with them, some bribed uh, Almohad units. But the loyalty of their generals is really low. I am impressed that the Almohads are still moving on despite having lost Grenada, and I think the Spanish did get down into Morocco at some point. Well, it may be time to make another attempt at uh, peace with the Spanish. Maybe they're getting sick of it. If not, I am going to try and attack, um, because this is, this is not acceptable. Uh, it's just too threatening. It's it, it's going to be distracting me from what I want to do to get my goals uh, in Italy. So I don't I don't think we can leave that uh, as is. Let's go ahead into Constantinople. See if we get any looting. Yeah, the Turks are going to be eliminated, I'm going to guess. Okay, do we want to ally with the Almohads? I don't think we get a great deal of advantage by doing that. But yeah, in, so in this case we're going to say no. Um, there are some interesting effects of having alliances you can get tipped off of when your ally is about to make an attack. Uh, but in this case, I don't think that's that useful. If that changes, we can certainly take another look. Um, okay, so no plundering, unfortunately. Uh, let's go right into Nicaea, and we're down to 1294 men. So, yeah, we're moving through Byzantine territory is not helpful uh, for our crusade. But we're starting to get a bit more cash, and I'm thinking what we may want to do at this point uh, is start investing, because Antioch... Of course, has some very nice trade resources. Let's go ahead and spend 800 on a, a trading uh, port, and then we're going to go uh, with an actual port and start building ships, uh, get some trade going in the Mediterranean, at least with the Byzantines, uh, because they do have some ports. They've got some islands. Uh, just having a single ship here is going to get us three uh, ports worth of trade. All of this stuff is going to be tradable in all three of these ports. If we ever get peace with the Egyptians, uh, then we could be trading down here. This is a very lucrative spot as well, but there's all these islands with ports and we can get up into the Black Sea. So now we do want to uh, to think about alliance with the Byzantines. Let's get a likely emissary. Uh, yeah, let's just take you and we'll go over and uh, right there. They'll probably be willing to do it. Oh no, 
we are attacked by the Italians. All right, so the Italian war is on. Uh, it's Prince Pietro and Tyrolia is, is attacked, so just north of Italy there. Uh, we've got some hills, it looks like, some forest. They've got two archers. We're outnumbered by 60 men, and he's got better units, I would say. Yeah, well, we've got to do what we can, right? So we're just going to try to do as much damage as we can. And then we're going to do a counterattack. We're going to go right for Milan. Let's see. I would love to be in the trees here. But there are just no good trees to be had. I guess let's uh, let's set up right here then. We've got our peasant general. We do have uh, 45 archers. Now this is probably too steep actually. Uh, but I think I think we're gonna have to go with the height. All right, Royal Knights, they're gonna try to outflank us, which makes sense. Let's just uh, slightly change our facing on this hilltop. All of these units are pretty uh, vulnerable to arrows, except for the Royal Knights, of course. And I don't have a real good answer to the Royal Knights. I mean, the other infantry I could theoretically just kind of swarm and hope to do a lot of damage on a downhill charge. These Slav warriors are not going to be super great, though. We do have one unit here with three Valor. Probably the result of some trait. Um, we could route, you know, if, if we get a good charge, we get lucky. We could route a lot of their infantry, theoretically. But I, I just don't see this working out in the long run. Alright, let's do it. Come to Royal Knights. Yeah, let's send the general in. I mean, this is... Obviously not a good scenario for him. But we at least have a downhill charge. A lot of valor on this uh, Royal Knight unit, though. And you can tell by the number of flags that his unit has. All those little green flags, like this unit here, has its three flags for the three points of valor. Oh, yeah. They're going to they're gonna crush us. Well, let's just speed it up. Yeah, not good. Okay, we lost Tyrolia. Uh, let's pay the ransom. And our emperor dies. Okay. The Turkish are wiped out. Okay, good. The king of Hungary is with us. He's canceled his alliance with the Italians. Very good. And the king of Poland has stayed with us too. The King of the Danes has stayed with us. Great, we've kept all of our allies. All right, I didn't notice that. That's the tricky thing. You want to check out your um, uh, your allies, see who they're allying with. I didn't notice that there was this coalition forming with the Italians who were neutral to me and all of my allies to the north and east. That could have been really bad. Uh, but I don't know. The other thing I don't know is what, uh, what prompts the various factions to stay allied with you or to drop their alliance with you. Is it... A function of who attacks like in Rome total war for example it's pretty predictable I've found uh, that if you are the attacker and you are allied with a fact with, with another faction and you're attacking their other ally if you attack they will side with you whereas if they attack you the other faction will side with the attacker basically they, they side with the aggressor in this case that didn't happen all the other factions sided with me. And I'm the much bigger faction than the Italians. Uh, I think I have more military than they do. I could be wrong there. So I'm not sure what calculation they're making. Is it the influence of my king? That would be great to know because I've got super high influence and he has super low influence. So maybe that's it. That, that would be really cool. And if any of you know what influence does, um, I would love to, love to find out. I know there are a few theories out there. 
Um, and I know it affects loyalty of your generals, uh, but other than that, not too terribly sure. All right, let's see how we can uh, how we can manage this because obviously the Italians are or the Spanish are going to wait to. Um, uh, well, they're just going to look for an opportunity here. So let's get our emissary over over to Aragon. See if we can get a piece with them. Now, if I really wanted to, we could screw up the Italians by going right into Genoa and probably making them uh, lose it. That is not one of the provinces needed for the Holy Roman Empire. That doesn't matter necessarily. But what I don't want to do is strengthen them in Milan, right? Like, I don't want these guys to just retreat over to Milan. This is not a super great general, their current doge. So I'm not worried about it that much, but he's got some other units with him. He's probably training something else here right now. Uh, so I'd rather, since I want Milan in Tuscany, I'd rather leave him where he is, especially since he's a weak king, and uh, hopefully cause a civil war. But now we have to take back Tyrolia. Uh, and what we can do here is we can actually use one of the new units that we've just been able to, uh, to train. And that is these very cool Swabian swordsmen that I always love to get to for the appearance, if nothing else. And the idea that there's uh, two-handed swords uh, this early in the game. Um, so that's cool. I don't know if it's historical at all. It looks like they've got the kite shield uh, that's probably giving them not much of a shield bonus in battle, actually. Uh, but they do have a two-handed sword, which gives them a bonus versus armored troops. They've got a strong charge, good defense, good morale. They're armored, a very good attack. They just seem like a great unit. Um, so we'll see how well they perform. I, you know, honestly, I haven't done like that many tests with them. I always like to use them, but I don't know exactly, you know, how useful they really are. Another really useful unit is these Dragina Cav. I'm going to skip them. Sport costs are kind of high. And also just for roleplay reasons, it's like they're a unit from Russia. How are they over in like, you know, Western Europe? Let's go ahead and, uh, and just keep pumping up some archers. What do we have in Provence? Um, is it worth it to get a unit of malicious sergeants? What do they have in Milan? Not really, I don't think. Let's keep, let's keep some of these units here. And let's go with this unit into Milan and into uh, also over the Alps. All right, they get one unit of militia search. Let's actually do that. Let's take that unit just to counter what they've got. A lot of these, I may as well just disband actually so I don't give myself uh, an overinflated sense. I guess you can't merge mercs. All right, that's, that's a little more accurate at least. See, this is the Duke of Burgundy. Why don't I keep him out? Because he's just a peasant unit. Uh, put him up there in Burgundy. And I can bring a lot of these guys down. That leaves this, which is, you know, kind of not nothing. We've got three archers there, two archers here for a total of five. We've got a good mix of infantry. A couple of units of Royal Knights. I think that should be good. That's certainly overwhelming. But the other thing we need to do is attack Tyrolia. Um, and there, they are likely to reinforce, possibly from Milan. So I'm not sure what I want to throw in. Let's send the king, Rudolf II. He hasn't done anything yet. Actually, his influence has gone. Oh, that's right. He's. Uh, this is a new king. This is the natural leader who's inbred and friendly. <laughs> what a mix. All right. And, uh, okay, so now Prince Herman is next in line. We just keep going down through these brothers. Uh, uh, when are we going to have a son take over? Uh, probably, probably when Herman takes over. But notice we have a lot of new heirs, princes and princesses, that suddenly appeared because this guy's now the king and he's been married. So he's been generating those heirs sort of off screen. Uh, let's leave the peasant unit there, or the, the spearman unit. Um, let's bring... Okay, these guys are just, uh... Ransomed. Right, Franconia. Yeah, all of you guys. You're the Duke of Franconia, you're the Duke of Swabia. Let's bring you down to Swabia. 
Let's bring you down to Bavaria. Yeah, I don't have a lot of uh, recruitment options here. Let's go with some spears. Yeah, let's just call that good, I guess. I will go into Swabia and, let's see, this is, uh, okay, so this is where we're getting the Swabian Swordsman. I don't think there's any other units that are going to get like a special Valor bonus here. Sometimes the Valor bonus doesn't show up. Um, there's a few cases where if, if, if we get to it, I'll, uh, I'll point that out. Um, but this seems to be my sort of teching up province. Uh, that said, we are in need of some funds. Let's go with a salt mine complex. And in Franconia, uh, we need to uh, we need to s take a look at our tax rate because we did get uh, get attacked, and when you lose a province, there's a chance of public order going down. Right, let's move him over. But yeah, let's actually keep building in Saxony. Uh, let's see. We do have tradable goods here. So let's add a port. And let's go ahead and spend more money, get another boat in Flanders. By the time the boat is done, the port will be almost done. We'll get a ship up here. That'll get us trading this wool uh, and this uh, grain down with Aquitaine at least. All right, and I think that's all I need to do, although I've got to add stuff to my attack. This is not going to work. All right, I think this would do it, leaving Burgundy very underdefended. And if the Spanish attack, that could be a huge disaster. Okay, there we go. So, Emperor Rudolf II, this is his, the first battle that a, a German emperor has been in in a very long time. We outnumber them two to one. I think this should be okay, although this guy has four Valor, Prince Pietro. Uh, but we'll just shoot them down. We'll shoot them down, and hopefully that'll take that out. We need to regroup quickly and get more troops over to the west because I am super paranoid about what the Spanish are going to do Apparently not this turn, but maybe the next. We got Spearman back here. Let's switch this up to a three-line defense. Just a little easier for me to conceptualize and group everybody up. And I hate the terrain. But that said, we can get over to the right. All right, they're hiding over there. And actually, if we approach them in good order, they may just withdraw off the field. Probably going to descend. They get two units of archers, so they may take some pot shots at us. But let's just ignore that. We will uh, get in place. We're returning fire now. We'll just have to take it. This is not good, obviously. We are uh, fighting uphill. Set our spearmen up. All right, this guy's got zero valor, so this is very risky throwing him in. Probably pushing a little too hard here with my uh, right. Oh, good. Thank God. D 
did not did not think we were going to be able to get them to route just just with those units there. Let's try to catch their uh, their prince. Just gonna pin them and crossbow them. All, right, all these guys are running away. We can ignore and just try to bring back our units. All right, they're, they're at 18 men. Archers are routing. King is in the woods. Let's actually send him up. We can get a, maybe a rear charge on these Royal Knights. Yeah, hopefully these guys can hold for like a minute. Did manage to get one valor for our emperor. Oh, those archers have stopped to fight. We're quite tired fighting them uphill. Royal Knights are marching away. They're probably going to get out. Yeah, they're just going to leave. The archers are now running away. Let's head over here and we'll take out the urban militia. want to just do as much damage as we can. We'll force them to withdraw. You know, even one lost battle might be enough to uh, to really wreck the Italians in terms of loyalty and, and in terms of causing a civil war. This guy already, uh, this prince who's getting away, had very low loyalty. And that's only going to be made worse with this loss. There we go. All right. That could have gone really badly, actually. Uh, I think if that prince had uh, stayed around and, and fought initially, if he had come down off the hill and charged while I was just setting up here, I mean, his four valor, right, something like that, he could have done a tremendous amount of damage. That he could have wrecked the, the battle for us because my emperor had zero valor. He had, I think, just one command star. So this is uh, none of this is good. All right, we get some confusion here with these routers trying to... Trying to get away. Let's see if we can address this. Come on. Just end it. There we go. I'm going to keep uh, keep those prisoners, see if we get any, uh, any repayment from them. Milan, they've just retreated. Okay, but they're in the castle. They retreated to the castle. So there's two losses. Let's see what this does to uh, Italian loyalty. They paid our ransom. All right, the Polish, the Byzantines. Antioch has our trading post. Ooh, Byzantines do not want an alliance. That's a little alarming. Okay. Let's see, the Italian Doge, three influence. All right, siege in Milan, this is not ideal uh, because the Spanish are gonna see that I do not have that many forces on the border. Okay. How to address this? Well, how to address this might be a question for the next episode. We're now in kind of a precarious situation where we need to keep up the pressure because we've got a new enemy to our south, the Italians. And uh, if we just sit here, if we move, uh, you know, aggressively against them, then that may invite attack from the Spanish. Let's try our ceasefire, see if that's going to result in anything. 
Um, but they it may just may not be in time. They may just see that we've already stripped forces away from our borders and they can afford to simply move in uh, against us in Burgundy and Provence. And if that happens, you know, it might be us who's in danger of a civil war. If we lose a couple, three provinces on this new emperor, uh, he's only going to be alive for a few more seasons. And then the next guy, I mean, Prince Herman's pretty great, but, um, well, that's the other thing. He's going to take over as emperor, and he's not going to be in Antioch when he does. Oh, but I'm seeing something interesting here. We have the option of invading straight to Tripoli, and we can do that this turn. Interesting. We shouldn't be able to, but we can, and that's because we're not allied, but we are taking advantage of Byzantine shipping. They have given us their, uh, their approval to pass through the land, and they've got a port, they've got a ship. I guess the game treats this as, like, you can just use their fleets, even though you're not allied, which is fantastic. Let's move this down. Only 1,064 men. They do have some naphtha throwers in the, uh, in the keep here. And they've got, you know, the kind of forces we have seen in the past. Nothing too surprising. Uh, I'm a little concerned about the Byzantines all of a sudden. They don't want to ally with us. However, they've got some very low loyalty on some of these uh, very high command generals, high dread uh, royal blood. This is ripe for a civil war, and they just have a new emperor. So they could be facing some problems of their own. Because of that, I think I'm going to risk sending some men into the south. Let's go ahead and recruit some horse archers. And all kinds of archers and send them down uh, with Prince Herman, I think. That's a thousand. That's another, uh, what is this, 500, 600. Let's leave him with, you know, some, let's just leave him with random stuff. Stuff that is not uh, terribly useful. I'll keep the ballista, actually. And let's take all these little, you know, 46 here. Actually, 654 Slavs are pretty decent. Yeah. All right. Let's, um, let's resolve this here. counterattacked in Milan. We're getting attacked by the Spanish. This is going to be a very busy season. Provence invaded. <clears throat> okay. It's one unit of Spanish Jeanettes. It's two stars, however. And my guys are just garbage. We do have three archers, though, and it's a bridge battle. Alright, let's do it. I thought we were going to end the episode, but... I just, uh, I can't leave this hanging. Just a single bridge. And we've got a bunch of archers. We've got a nice little hill here, too. Okay. We don't want to just stay right at the, at the, the mouth of the bridge. We want to have the archers shooting them when they're just about ready to cross. We've got three units of peasants. Uh, we do have some urban militia. I don't know if it matters which side uh, they attack from, but let's set them. Well, let's set them like over here, actually, just in case they bring bowmen down. And they've got uh, they've got some siege weapons. Looks like two units, but uh, or one, but there's not much point uh, since they can't move them on the battlefield. All right, spearmen, feudal sergeants, spearmen, feudal sergeants. Yeah, this is. Uh, Kind of bad. There are some peasants, though. And light troops. Spearman General here has zero valor. The most valorous units today are the peasants. Alright, I think now is the time we want to start charging down and surrounding them. The feudal sergeants are going to be a big problem. But if we can get these spearmen routing into the others, that, you know, could be helpful. I'm 
not looking great so far. Should send the general over to the left. Urban militia doing quite well on the right. And here come the rest of them. Those feudal sergeants look like they have at least one valor, maybe two. Peasants starting to waver. Well, we can at least do some damage to them here. We've already done some decent amount of damage. And there it begins. Center is routing, the right is routing. Let's go ahead and withdraw the archers. There we go. All right, so I knew that was gonna go bad. Well, I didn't know, but suspected, I guess. Uh, Provence is now under siege. Burgundy is invaded by the Spanish as well. This is another bridge battle. Two bridges, however, and they are in a better position this time, I think. Although we are in somewhat even ground in terms of valor. Only some of their units have valor. Those, of course, are the very dangerous Spanish units, so that's bad. Uh, their ballista is not going to be useful to them here, but they have more archers than I do. Jeez, do we make them bleed a little bit at the bridge, or do we retain our forces? I'm thinking about retreating to the stronghold, honestly. We can do a nice big counterattack. All right, Tripoli, they just withdraw. We've got a siege there will have to resolve, and we're being attacked in Milan. This is Prince Pietro again, who's attempting to make up for his dishonor in the last battle. I think this is looking quite good. Let's go ahead and save. This is going to turn this into a defensive battle. They've got lots of archers, but we've got some high ground to use. And if we succeed here, uh, we can get the castle, I believe. Oh yeah, we've got some very nice ground. Let's go ahead and change this to the nice uh, three-line defense. Puts the archers out front, spearmen kind of in the back, and I think all of that will be good. This is our only cav unit so far. Let's go ahead and uh, place the assembly. Actually, the assembly point flag is totally fine. They're probably going to come up from our left and try to get on this nice rise. But we've got just so many archers. General has been slain, <laughs> and even now his body is being borne away. Well, that'll do it. Bring these other archers over. Got uh, some Bulgarian brigands here in the woods. Um, let's move out in front of the archers, I think, at this point, since they're not looking like they're going to just break. We're going to have to start fighting them on the hill. down here. Oh yeah, we've got it now. Alright, so what's this going to do to Italy? 
because that's pretty much the end of uh, Prince Pietro and his, uh, his army that attacked Tyrolia. This is their attempt to take back Milan. It's not going to succeed. So we should take it this next turn here. And as a result of that, they're going to be down a province, uh, not only, you know, having failed to take one. So I think that's going to be more significant uh, in terms of their loyalty and in terms of their potential for a civil war. We'll just have to mop these guys up here. They're, they're going to be withdrawing off the battlefield regardless. They're not. They forgot to withdraw. They're just hanging out. Well, I've got a five Valor Prince here, so I think this is going to go just fine. Yeah, there we go. All right, and we'll just hold on because we may get some nice ransom out of them. We're not going to get the Prince ransom, but, um, but maybe we'll get some more units. Yes, very nice because we really, we really need that money. All right, do we want to pay uh, to the Spanish? These are going to be a lot of peasants, so I'm going to say no. Oh, come on! Oh, no. All right. Okay, so here's how excommunication works. The Pope will give you a warning, and you have a 10-year period in which to, uh, to stop hostile activities. Uh, what that means is if you attack again during that period, you are excommunicated. However, I think the Pope can only give one warning at a time. So in other words, he had earlier warned us against attacking the Spanish. That was, I believe, 10 years ago. Uh, notice that this warning comes after that window has closed. And so that means we should be free now to attack the Spanish. I'm glad I didn't attack them too early now that I think about it in a way. Uh, because I would have got excommunicated. Uh, so now we have to not attack the Italians, which kind of stinks because we are not going to get Milan. However, all right, Spanish rejected our ceasefire time. However, we do have civil war now in Italy. And, you know, it is not a super big, impressive civil war, but it is a civil war nonetheless. Uh, this is the... Uh, re. Uh, what, is, what, what did we call it here? Uh, ransomed. This is the ransomed army returning to um, uh, to Italy. They have substantial numbers, actually, so they're probably going to do fine against these rebels. Uh, we see Tuscany has a tiny rebel force, which is very disappointing. Here's the new Doge. Uh, he's looking a lot better. That old Doge was just bad news, so this guy's got better influence. Speaking of influence, all right, we're doing pretty decent at six, but we can't attack the Italians anymore. Well, in a way, that simplifies things. I mean, we could take the XCOM, right? We could just just eat that. Uh, but I don't think I want to uh, because that's going to make life a lot harder. What I want to do instead is turn my attention to the Spanish, and we're going to deal with this problem, uh, you know, maybe not once and for all, but we're going to aggressively try to secure our borders to the west. We've got still uh, plenty of time to cash in on that Holy Roman Empire uh, goal. Notice that it shows us tantalizingly we do have the two points for Milan, but that's obviously going to end because we're compelled now to withdraw our forces. So we're going to withdraw here. We're going to leave them Milan. They're going to take it back, and this new king is going to be in a better position than he was uh, originally. But this gives us now the chance to concentrate our forces against one, uh, one of these Spanish, uh, Spanish attacking armies, and I guess we're going to have to go right up into Burgundy with probably those two. Um, you know what? Let's let's focus on Burgundy here because Provence, I'm honestly a lot less concerned about. We'll bring taxes back down to very low. We'll bring taxes to high in Tyrolia. And now we're going to have to spend some cash on training some more troops. Uh, we have been doing that a little bit. We've got our first Swabian swordsman uh, in Swabia, and so we'll send them down to Burgundy as well. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and pump up our training facilities a little bit. Go ahead and train some archers here. Let's get some uh, urban militia going. And uh, let's get some more Slavs, just for something. 
I guess, Spearman in Franconia. And here we don't have anything going on in Lorraine. We need to start being able to produce troops and start getting the quality up a little bit because as we've seen, our enemies are now training feudal uh, sergeants. So we have uh, conquered Tripoli. This is under siege. Uh, possibly there's going to be a counterattack. So let's go ahead and queue up an assault here. And uh, we're going to need to lower the taxes as well in Antioch. But that's going to be the resolution of our second crusade, which is going to help with influence, which actually looks like we're going to need, because we're probably going to lose a couple more provinces before this is all shaken out. That, however, makes a, I guess, a fittingly dramatic end uh, for this episode here. When we come back, we're going to resolve this big battle in Burgundy, which may simply lead to the Spanish withdrawing. We're going to follow them, if they do, down to Provence, take that back, or possibly just go to Toulouse, right, to try to cut them off and then deal with all of this. We've got some time now that we, as long as we don't attack the Italians, uh, we've got some time to focus on that. Although, as I say that, I'm starting to realize that the Italians could take advantage of the XCOM warning and attack us here or here. Well, we may, uh, we may be excommunicated before the end of this uh, next episode. So I hope you'll join me for that one. Until then, everybody, take care.